with Bilbor and um, for the head headaches and toes for cough. We're live, but there's only the two of us. We're live already? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we still have eight minutes. I know. But this so, is what we went through last week. Yeah, so I guess she didn't figure out how to fix it. So we'll talk to her again tomorrow. And she may be aware of it. She was the only one in the office, so she might not have gotten to it. Right. And I, that's understandable, mm -hmm. especially after, just after a holiday. Right. Get a message from Terry. He is coming. Peter is in the other office. I'm in another room. I don't know anything about Kevin. Let's see. But we don't even have everybody here for applications either. So. Mm. Presenting the Maddies? Yes. yes. Okay. The second case. Okay, got it. Candy dish there, Jojo. Please. Oh, 
Present. Gary, are you going to present for the Maddies? Are you going to present the case? Yeah, I'll probably Is he is he here? Do I see that little form? But she's going to be here as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. She's going to be here too, but she, she, did, she did. She did authorize him. Just so I should have it in here. If not in the, um, it's in the binder, binder, then it's in the application form. <laughs> that would be the second case. No? No, nope, that's the building file. The one in there. Well, the one. So you're in Maddie's? Yep. So it would be one of these pages through there. Usually they're not packet, aren't they? I just like to I see. Know. I like to see everything. I don't need to print everything because you guys don't need to see every signature. If you need to see it, it's in the folder. Otherwise, I'm wasting a lot of paper. I appreciate you're not wasting paper. I see it. Good. <coughs> and so Mitt, Patricia will be here. Yes? yes. There she is. everybody it's uh, seven o'clock we're on live television so I'm gonna ask everybody to quiet down and sit down please this is the October meeting of the Nottingham Zoning Board of Adjustment um, we have no we have no Kevin tonight apparently not he's a ghost. So let me say to are both applicants here yes so let me just say, um, before I introduce the board members, that we have a light board tonight. Normally we're five persons, and you need to get a minimum of three votes to get approved on everything. We vote separately on the five criteria. So I offer you the option of putting off your hearing until we do have a full board, like next month. Or you can go forward, it's up to you. Knowing that it's easier to get three when there are five, odds wise, but it's entirely up to you. So, members of the board Peter White, what? Terry Bonzer, Teresa Bascom, and I'm <coughs> Bonnie Winona McKinnon, and I'm the chairman. So I will be running the meeting tonight. Um, I haven't seen our agenda yet. I mean, I'm sorry at home. Do we have, we, we don't have anything before the hearing? Hearings? We mean the agenda? Yeah. Right there, I have it. So we have two hearings and then 
We'll deal with them um, sort of normal business after the hearings. Okay. So I now declare the first hearing open. Um, this is case number 19-010-VA-VA. An application from Christopher Evans on behalf of the current owners, Stephen Musio and Dania Jackson, for two variants requests from Article 2, Section C.1, parentheses A of the Nottingham Zoning Ordinance. One request is to permit construction of a single family dwelling on a non conforming lot of record, tax map 70, lot 30 which meets all zoning criteria except the lot has 200 feet of frontage, non-contiguous frontage, on a private road, not on a class five or better as provided in the definitions for frontage. The second request from the Evans is to permit construction of a single family dwelling on a non-conforming lot of record, map 70, lot 31, which meets all zoning criteria except the lot, the lot has 200 feet minimum frontage on a private road, not a class five or better as provided in the definitions for frontage. The properties are located on Tuckaway Shores Road in Nottingham, New Hampshire, and are identified as tax map 70, lots 30 and 31. So the rules of engagement here are I have called the hearing in session and read the application. So members of the board may ask questions at any time during testimony by any person. Each person who appears shall be required to come up to this table and sit at one, in one of these chairs and state their name and address and indicate their affiliation to the case. Any member of the board through the chairperson may request any party to the case to speak a second time. So you might be called back up. Any party to the case who wants to ask a question of another party to the case must do so through the chairperson. The applicant shall be called to present their case and those abutters in favor shall be allowed to speak. So we'll first hear the applicant present his or her um, application to us. And then any abutters in the audience um, will be allowed to speak. Any abutters in favor will be, be allowed to speak first and then abutters in opposition. The board will hear any evidence that pertains to the case from other parties that wish to speak. So anyone may bring evidence to this hearing. The applicant and those in favor shall be allowed to speak in rebuttal. Those in opposition shall be allowed to speak in rebuttal. The chairperson shall present a summary setting forth the facts of the case and the claims made for each side with opportunity given for correction from the floor. The hearing shall be declared closed, and then the board will deliberate and may vote to approve or disapprove the application immediately after the close of the hearing, or wait until the members can prepare their statements of reasons for their vote with a final decision of the board made within 30 days of the hearing. So we can delay the hearing if we feel we need advice or, or we need to hash it up more. We usually decide during the hearing, just so you know, but not always. So a simple majority is necessary to validate a decision. So you need three votes in the affirmative to have your application approved. So the first case will be the Mr. Christopher Evans. And um, are you Christopher Evans? I am he. <laughs> there you go. Come up to the table, please, sir. There are, in fact, two lots here, so are we talking about one first or both at the same time? Or what's I, I would say that that is up to you. I saw in the plan that they are adjacent lots. Yes. And so where the circumstances apply to both, you're certainly, I think it's certainly okay if the board members agree for you to speak to them both. Mm -hmm. um, 
in one presentation. Um, if there are some special circumstances about either of them that separate them, then you should talk take that section and talk about them separately. Okay. Does that I, make sense? I will. There is a subtle difference in, mm -hmm. in the two. Yeah, it's true that really no two pieces of property are ever the same. Right next to each other. <coughs> so um, we, um, my girlfriend and I, we just um, purchased um, this property. We had it under um, purchase for a long time, but there were, um, there were issues with the, uh, the, the estate. Um, the property was owned by a, a Mr. Musial, who um, bought it in about 1959 or so when um, the you know, original subdivision was um, conducted at Boy Shores. And um, he built a little cabin there. And then he, um, he bought the uh, two lots behind it over um, a different periods of time. One was, I think, in um, 1962. And the uh, second lot, um, the deed shows it being recorded in 1996. So um, they, they were purchased at two separate times. Um, mm -hmm. the, um, the, his intention, and, and my dad knew Henry Musial um, in uh, Manchester at a service station in Manchester. My dad did too. So they knew each other. I grew up with Steve and went to uh, high school with them. So I've known the family for a long time. And, um, the, um, I mean, it's unfortunate that, you know, it's one of those properties that's held in a family for a long time and, you know, it's like when someone dies, that's when they, you know, it comes available in the, property, in the family for 50 years. But um, Steve and uh, Danya, um, you know, weren't, weren't able to keep up with it and um, had other um, purposes in life. But their dad did buy these two lots behind his cabin. Um, the cabin's right on the water there. And with the intention of having a little kind of family compound for both of his two kids. Mm -hmm. And um, so when this came available, we saw this same opportunity basically that um, I have a daughter that's in medical school right now, and um, we'd, we'd like to retire there at some point. A lot of people do, um, probably not just yet, but um, in a, you know, a few more years from now. But um, there's some. Um, the two lots behind it, but I thought would be a great opportunity to have a family member um, have a, a home nearby and live, you know, with us in that area. Um, not, you know, trying to make an apartment or something in, in this little cabin, but to have a separate home and they can be far enough away that they're not there every day. <laughs> so. So can, can I ask a clarifying question here? I heard Joanna ask you if you brought your deed. Yes. Because your application states that the Musials, Musial and Jackson are the owners. Is that correct? They were the owners until last Monday. Okay. So um, you, you just closed on the property? Yes, we did. Um, they, they did sign um, a permission um, to um, make application um, on their behalf so we could start the process. And then, um, and then the, um, it was also in our purchase agreement that we could um, do that, you know, apply to um, you know, make sure that these are the okay. lowest low possible to uh, be used. So um, we closed, I have the deeds from, um, we closed last Monday. Okay. So I do have those deeds here. Maybe you could just leave a copy with Joanna. Do you have a copy? Yes, I do. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Madam Chairperson, doesn't that totally alter his application? I mean, the information isn't correct on what we have in front of us. So um, I think he has to refile it. No, I don't think so, and here's why. I don't see it. This is why these should be in our packet. He said that they, get, they, they designated him as their agent before he closed on it. Right, but it says here the owners are Steve Amusial and Dania Jackson, and that's not correct. And that's what's on the application. <clears throat> I mean, it's, the application is not correct. I'm sorry. The application <clears throat> was correct, and the uh, circumstances have changed, but the same people are involved. You can just, I, I'm perfectly comfortable. I don't know how the other members of the board feel in letting Mr. Evans go forward since he now is the owner. He's only been the owner for a week. And, it, and his application has been filed for probably several weeks. 
Let's see. It's not that any of the parties have changed, except the Musial Jacksons are now no longer. Well, the um, deed has changed, the, the tax records are, are now changed, and the application they, they, they has changed. The tax records have probably not changed yet. The exactly. Deed, the deed goes from the closing to the registry of deeds, and then it comes to the town about two months later. So the town wouldn't even have that information yet. That's the way it used to be anyway. So I, I, I'm going to rule that he can go forward unless anybody has a, some legal objection. If, if I may just roll this out there, because I, I did consider that this timing could be kind of a, a question or something. Um, the variance goes along with a lot. So if Steve and Danya got a variance last week, that variance would stay in place with the lot. So it could be sold 50 different times, and that variance would still follow the that, lot. That's correct. The variance runs with the land forever. So that I, I felt that that would be that that would be just simply like whether it sold a week after the variance or a week before. I, I didn't see how that would be different. Well, I just came from a training on ZBA, and they stressed how important the application has to be accurate. They it is stressed. accurate, though. It is accurate at the time it was made out. Could we please have a copy of your deed, sir? I mean, you can proceed. You're the chairperson, but like I say, this isn't accurate. It was accurate when he made the application. It was not accurate right now. And this is what we have before us tonight is inaccurate information. I'd like to hear from the other two board members. What's your feeling on it, Terry? My feeling of it is that as it says applicant's information, it's Christopher Evans' name that's on here. And the owners were them, Mother Musials and Jackson. Mm -hmm. But now that he has it so that it's, in my opinion, it's Mr. Evans' application. Um, um, my one question is, say we made a ruling, this was appealed to Superior Court, this is the information they would get, and I think they would I think a reasonable it. person would say that since he was their agent in the first place. I mean, if time is of the essence, it's something, you know, pressing, we have to do it tonight, I guess I can understand moving forward. But I don't know what the urgency is. Well... Gary, what did you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you both. Um, you know, I think, I mean, the application was made out. The bodies were notified. Uh, they, if they have, are here to object or, uh, I mean, they've got their notice. The only thing that's happened is the land has changed, changed names, and that's, and I agree with him that if the, uh, they had gotten a variance, you know, two weeks ago and he bought the land, it would still go with it. So. I think it's um, it's not like he's got Mickey Mouse down here or my name or somebody else's name. The chain of title is clear on his deed. It went from these people to him. He was their agent in the first place. I really don't think it's an issue. I don't think the courts would have an issue. No, I, I think the court would give a, a wide birth. Birth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I and, think they would. And I think that if his name was not on the application at all, that would be something different. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Anyway. <clears throat> anyway, there's always a first. This is, not, this is not an issue that's come before the board before. I, I agree with Peter that applications have to be accurate, but I don't think it's inaccurate because the property changed hands in the process. And it went from these people to their agent. Anyway, you may continue, sir. Would, would it be suitable to have? this works or not, but a motion to amend the owner information on the application? I don't think we can change the application. We don't change the applications. Okay. I don't think, if anyone takes you to court over this name on the application, I would be surprised, but you never know. Um, I don't think it's particularly likely, and I'm, I'm not sure the court would find it um, unusual or, or bad procedure on our part. I feel comfortable with it, personally. Uh, and, and had um, 
had it not for us, and it was just it was a long time because of the estate and complications with the lawyers. Um, had it not closed, I would have been here anyway um, for Steve and Danya um, right. to, to present. Anyway, so go ahead with your presentation. Go ahead. Um, so lot thirty one. Um, it, um, we met with Dale and. Um, discussed you know, building on the lot, setbacks, all of the criteria. Um, there's a septic uh, part test done, septic design was completed, um, meeting all state guidelines. Um, on one of the uh, two lots, he noted that the, um, there was a town setback, and um, on the septic, which um, I think you guys see all the time, septic being closer to 20 feet, but um, he did say, um, you know, if you, that has to be 20 feet from the line, so we went back to the uh, septic designer and, um, and he moved it back, it was just a couple feet um, too close to the line, not knowing that the town had a, a separate, um, you know, stricter standard than the state. So uh, we went back to see Dale, um, discussed the, um, all the uh, lot setbacks, the uh, lot area, the um, zoning restrictions and um, criteria. To um, you know, eventually build a single family home. And um, he said, Well, the only issue here is that you are on a private road. So we're here for variance on the private road. Um, so, the, um, again, it is a lot of record. Um, it was created in the subdivision that was approved in 1957. Um, the years. Um, in this particular subdivision, there's about 35 other homes, um, and they are all on a private road, 100% of them. Um, I didn't go beyond this particular subdivision to look at um, other areas in the town along the lake, but it's pretty consistent that everywhere along the lake, there's a lot of lots that are you know, about a third, quarter, half acre, whether on the waterfront or just in from the waterfront. Um, on private roads. Um, one of the uh, things that's a little different about here is this is um, the uh, selectman, I believe, just rewrote to extend um, this road as a uh, emergency lane, uh, meaning that they, um, they plow the road, and they have for many years, and um, they, um, they do keep it plowed for emergency access uh, for fire trucks and police and ambulances and um, water rescues and to um, you know have access to the lake or you know whatever they need. So it is actually maintained, and um, and the other homes there's several people that live in the area um, year round, and there's some um, people that you know are out of state and they just have little camps up there. It's kind of a mixture. Um, on lot 31. It's, um, it does have 300 feet of frontage on the road. Thir excuse me, 31 or 32, because you said 31 for the first one. I said 31. Still. Okay, so still talking about 31. Okay. Um, so, with regards to the um, private road, um, I'd like to touch base on the um, criteria for the variance. Um, the, um, under the, um, it's not contrary to public interest. Property rights are protected under the U.S. Constitution, state constitution, and upholding property rights and laws of, is of public interest. Um, the zoning ordinance and the master plan do permit single family homes in this area. Um, the uh, purposes of the zoning and the master plan provide for safe, modern housing, protection of public peace, safety, and welfare, and um, permitting a safe, um, Modern housing is consistent with the zoning and master plan. Um, there are housing needs that are of public interest. And the public has to live somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, de denying of the restriction of the rights of the property does not serve any public interest. There's no in adverse impacts to the town or other town facilities or utilities or services as these are all presently um, provided at this location um, and several past this location, um, several homes. So this is kind of at the beginning of uh, the whole um, neighborhood area. So there's many homes past this that they get to. Um, so there's no adverse public um, impacts here. 
The spirit of the zoning ordinance is um, observed. The zoning ordinance provides for housing needs of the public. Dwellings are permitted in this district. Other dwellings exist in this district. The proposal is consistent with the zoning, the spirit of the ordinance, and the uses in this location. Um, the zoning does provide and permit for modern safe housing, and um, we are looking to be part of this community. We'd like to um, uh, have our family be here and part of this community. Substantial justice is done. Denial of variance would unduly, unfairly, and unjustly unjust, limit the constitutional rights of the owner in the use of this property. It would um, deprive us of any minimal usage of this property. Um, you know, it's not like we could put a nuclear power plant or a factory or some other thing. This is the minimum usage that we could even ask for. So, anyway, um, Usage um, is consistent with the usages of other properties in the area. Um, it's similar in um, this frontage and lot configurations in this area. Um, it would be fair and just to permit um, similar rights of usages as those currently enjoyed by all the neighbors in the area, um, in this district. And um, very relief would be fair and just to me. Um, values of the surrounding properties. Um, many of the surrounding properties are camps and more than 50 years old. Um, there are some um, updated modern homes. There are, have been some variances um, granted um, in this area and nearby on, um, on private roads. Um, this, um, I, I'm just looking at about eight or nine of them listed over the last couple of years. Um, so the uh, proposal is um, a single family home and um, it's anticipated to be newer, safer, more modern, more energy efficient than the other homes in this area. Um, the value is anticipated to probably be equal or higher to the other properties, um, thereby bringing up the overall average value of the properties and, um, in, you know, and making the area a little bit nicer instead of just being all camps would be a, a nice single family homes. Um, it's consistent with the use in this area and it will not diminish the value of other homes. Um, no fair substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance and the specific application of the provisions of the, um, to the property. And again, the, um, the thing that separates this is that a lot of the homes were built before the zoning came along. Um, and then the zoning changed and now this precludes or limits the rights of these, this property. Um, so the hardship in this circumstance is um, the zoning has changed to you know, preclude you know, any um, use on this private road. Again, we're only asking for access that other people have on the same private road. Um, so we want to use it similarly to others in this area. Um, zoning regulations, um, they changed and they restricted the rights to use this in a way that others are using in this area. And there's no fair substantial relationship between this property and others because others have the right to use the private road. And this one, according to the zoning, does not. Um, so others are committed to um, have reasonable use of this property. Um, the zoning ordinance when applied to this property restricts equal use that others have. It's unfair. Um, it's a reasonable use. It's a single family home on a private road. There are many, many, many of those in the town and many, many, many in this area. In fact, I just um, did my pictures, if I may. Um, this um, diagram, which I can pass up there, is, um, shows all the homes in the area and the road comes in. There's a road forks. Uh, this is the only access that goes back into uh, Raymond, basically. Um, and highlighted on here are all of the houses that are on the private road. Basically, 100% of them are on a private road. So 100% of these people have the right to use their property. This one according to the zoning ordinance, does not. Um, the, um, if, if the zoning were applied towards all the other homes, then none of them would be able to be there. 
um, basically, um, applying a higher standard to this, to this property than to others severely limits or precludes any rightful use of this property. Um, the variance would be a minimum relief from this undue, unshared restriction. The uh, proposal is reasonable, permitted, consistent with the zoning and with the neighborhood. Um, without the variance, no use is permitted. Um, that's all. Did you have anything different to add for lot 30? Um, <coughs> yes, lot 30. Let me jump to that one for one second. Just, just a difference is all I'm looking for. You don't have to read the same thing all over I, again. I won't. I <laughs> spare you so we can all go home. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I just, it, it, basically that information would be the same. I just want to know what the difference is because you said they were as, as different. Well, here's, here's the thing with Lot 30. Um, lot 30 does, in fact, have 200 feet of frontage, but it's the road kind of wraps around the corner, and there's frontage on the same road in two different locations. So I don't know if we call that continuous frontage or non-contiguous frontage if you have the same frontage on the same exact road, but it's not connected to so it's that is the main difference here. Um, the it has 100 feet in the front and 100 feet in the back. Right. Not um, contiguous. So, and I did make a small, oh, this lovely colorful diagram here, this, this is the uh, first one which shows all the houses on a private road, which is, also what this is part of, private road on the same private road, you know, to use. But this orange um, area, there's about 30 lots in the area, or 35 houses, um, and 41 lots. And um, again, 100% are on the private road, but the orange ones highlighted all have less than 200 feet of continual frontage. Um, there is this same question that comes up when you have a lot like 61, which is on the corner and has frontage on three roads. Is that contiguous frontage on one road? Um, I don't know. Um, you so said all contiguous, are the roads contiguous? Then it is contiguous. Just means it's connected. No, they're connected, yes, they are connected. But as, as far as the private road goes, it doesn't really matter. You don't have frontage on a public road, so that's, that's the key. Right. And, and many of them have 60 feet, 70 feet, um, far less than the 100 or 200, depending on mm -hmm. which way you're looking at this. Um, we are proposing to um, you know, <coughs> keep the, um, the lots up near the uh, top section. Um, you know, there's a couple houses down on the waterfront there, and uh, you'll know, keep them um, orientated uh, closer to the access out and have driveways there to uh, you know, maintain privacy uh, you know, near the lake. I will be one of those people that I'm looking to maintain that privacy because um, I have the house on the lake on 133. Um, so that would be the, um, the main difference. Otherwise, we're the same criteria as far as um, wanting a, asking for a minimal usage um, exception from the uh, various to be able to build. Tell me when you put this property under agreement. Um, quite a long time ago. And um, did you have a long period for closing? Extremely. In fact, I was very uptight about the, um, um, missing a prime summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, but you, but you own lot 33. Pardon me? But you own lot 33. 33 and um, um, 30 and 31, yes, as a, as a package. Oh, so you bought them all three of them together? Yes. I, I, okay. And it's, um, like I said, with the estate, there was just um, a lot of... Um, so before you filed with Joanna to come before this board, 
you had a purchase and sales agreement on this property. Affirmative. So that gives him an equitable interest in the property, by the way, when he does have certain rights anyway. I mean, that makes me feel even better. For the owners agree to let him go for a variance on property that they owned, and, and they were all in the process of changing ownership before um, he applied. It, it, it's true. And in the purchase and sales agreement, it does, um, under additional provisions, it says seller gives permission to buy or his representatives to conduct, um, you know, enter the property, conduct any, make any applications, um, agrees to sign separate authorizations or applications if applicable, um, and um, we could do test pits, septic designs, um, you know, any surveying, any, um, you know, at our own expense. So would you mind leaving a copy of that with Joanna? Um, I, Do you have another copy or? I, can I leave just the back page? I, I don't know if there's other information here that's maybe not public. <clears throat> if you're talking about M-O-N-E-Y, it is public. Anybody can go to the registry and look it up. Okay. Uh, uh, if you're talking about the price. I'm sorry. The, co the price that you paid. OK. Um, <laughs> It's not public, but it is public. Oh, no, no. The tax stamps will say whatever that monetary amount was. I'm a real estate agent. What can I tell you? The, the, the back page, the additional provisions, has their signatures and outlines the um, authorization. How about the front page that describes the property so that there's something that goes together? Are you comfortable? I'm not trying to pry into I I just want this in the file. OK. That, that the board was made aware that you had an equitable interest in the property at the time of application. Can I note that that's in my minutes, so if he's really uncomfortable having that, it's in the minutes and then it could be accessed at the registry if necessary? That's not at the registry, just the deed is at the registry. Um, with no, the text. Uh, I, there's just something in here that's... Um, Personal? Yes, there is one thing, but so I'll... Could right. you redact that? Could you make a copy and redact it? I, I'll just provide the top and the back. <coughs> okay. And the middle page that has some details in there that are... Private. private. That's fine. It, it, will, it will be enough to show that you had the property under agreement before you came before this board, before you applied to come before this board. And, and I just make a copy of that for that purpose in case that was a question. Do you want a copy of it right now? No, no, I... You have it. Okay, okay. so that's for us. I mean, if you want to just pass I, I, these, I, I, you, I you have these. your own. We have, no, uh, we have a similar to see this here. Here. Does anybody want to see the purchase and sales agreement? No, thanks. Sure. Are you finished, Mr. Evans? I am indeed. I just want to say something that's totally not part of the hearing. I noticed that your phone number is 7599777, and my office number is 6597779. What <laughs> <laughs> are the He's odds of that? Call you. Be <laughs> well, you have to move the numbers around a little bit, but it's just weird. Numbers. numbers game, right? Okay, so if you're done, sir. Does the board have any questions before you leave? Um, Peter? Yes, um, you said you got uh, test pits and the sept septic designs on both lots? Yes, sir. Have you already started, you had a design you know, by state standards? Um, yes, they're designed by a licensed state um, designer. Hmm. And uh, they can meet the state values. Now, have you addressed the drainage problems there? Um, he did um, view the lot, do the uh, test pits, uh, soil samples, um, flagged off um, the um, areas on the lot. Then one of the lots down at the very bottom, um, close to the lake, there was a small um, 
wet area, but the, um, the everything was in, in accordance with the state guidelines to be away from whatever minimum distances there are or whatever. I'm told. I'm not an expert in that business. You know, every time it rains hard, the property below yours there gets gets flooded. It's like a river that comes down the road because your property's uphill. So if you were to clear cut those two lots, that would probably make the, the problem a lot worse. And you would have to clear cut those two lots to put two houses on there. I, and I was thinking about complaining to the neighbors upstream from us in case that ever <laughs> happened. But uh, we'll, we'll save that for another um, meeting when we have to do that. Um, there's no intention to clear cut the lot, and um, again, it's a matter of you know maintaining the privacy and orientation um, away from the lake and the, uh, the lower side to allow for an uninterrupted forested area to be you know, protected and um, basically. Well, my concern is these are very tiny lots. They were actually meant to be camp lots, not for year-round houses originally. And to be able to put on uh, single family houses with septic systems and wells and roads, you're, yeah, you're gonna have to pretty much move most of the woods that are there, which will not only add to the drainage problems, but it will definitely affect the property values of people around there to have that piece of woods all of a sudden cleared right in the middle of them. So I'm, you know, I've got a few concerns on that. Yeah. Well, one of the lots is his own. Right, well, he's living in the one house, right? So you already have a house. It's not really a hardship for you not having two more houses behind yours. Um, the hardship is about the right to build on a uh, private road and not really about meeting the setbacks. Um, I think that's um, handled by the uh, building inspector and the, um, and the septic ins um, plan is handled by the state. So, you know, I think the um, variance uh, we're looking for is on are we can we build on a private road like the other homes or not um, certainly somebody I guess could clear cut an entire lot at any given time if they wanted to um, and whether they had a variance or didn't have a variance or build or not build and affect the drainage for the downwind people um, but that's not the intention here certainly Right. Well, our our job here is to figure out how, by granting this variance, it will affect the community versus how your your private rights are being affected. So, if it's going to affect your the abutters in a negative way, and it's going to add to the drainage problems right next to Patuckaway Lake. And I don't see how these septics won't just drain downhill right into the lake. You're right across the street from the lake. So, once again, there are some concerns with this particular location, and because of existing conditions and other people surrounding it so if it's going to impact the neighborhood we have to look at that well, there is a um, according to um, the neighbor um, there is a um, an area at the end of the road that um, that does um, receive drainage um, and um, back here um, Mr. Potterman is here and um, we were chatting and standing at the end of the road and uh, looking over and he had just done some landscaping and um, at the end of the road and you could see where it had kind of, you know, the water was running and he said, oh, it kind of washed off. So we replaced that there and, you know, regraded it. And um, I said, well, wh where does it go? Is it going to the lake? He said, no, there's a small area here where this water kind of is received before it goes into so it doesn't drain directly into the lake. And additionally, there's a road right there in between this that, um, you know, certainly any person driving down that road leaking oil or gas um, could have a much more severe impact than building a single family home is permitted in this area. Um, the, um, there's, the roads could wash out and probably do. Um, and that's, um, you know, that's that not our roads that we're not asking to build on the road. We're asking to build on a privately owned lot, basically. So um, I can't, uh, I can't predict, you know, all the rain and weather, but um, again, we're, we're going to use reasonable standards to build and, um, and have to meet state criteria and town criteria for the setbacks and leaving a good buffer so that, you know, there is a buffer to protect the others. 
but that's why it's helpful to drive by these properties is because you can't look on this map and see the slopes and see the conditions see the the existing gutters where the water is draining down you just can't see that information here so if you drive over there to be honest I drove around that corner and I looked at that and I thought you're only going to put one house on that those two lots that's like how's he going to do that to imagine two single family houses going on that corner I don't know how like I said, I think it will major impact the neighborhood, and I don't see how it wouldn't add more to the drainage problem. I mean, where is all that water going to go? It's not going to be absorbed into the, that area where it's going now. It's just going to be more going down that hill. Actually, that question came up in a previous hearing. Terry, are you the person who said, or did somebody say that, Septic system water doesn't go out; it goes down. Right. Yeah, it does go down. I mean, because of like the way the system is designed. I mean, and how far? Spread. Gravity. Well, it goes down a few feet. <laughs> well, but it goes down till it meets, you know, surface water. And by and then, then, it's, then, then it's purified. So, I mean, that's the idea behind it. So, we, we are thinking about a relatively small footprint, um, maybe 900 square feet. And um, you know, if you look at some of the other homes in the area, um, even like the downstream, if you will, home from there, um, you know, they have a similar lot size. Of, um, it's about a third of an acre. They have a similar lot size, and they've got a three-car <coughs> garage. Um, they've got a big patio. They <coughs> down the water. They have every tree is removed, or almost every tree is removed from the lot. So there's nothing interfering with water coming from the road across their land or their own water coming on their own land. Going to the lake, there's no barrier or drainage or anything. Um, they have a 3,000 square foot footprint of a home between the original home, the addition, the porches, the decks, the walkways, the driveway, and the three-car garage, and we're looking at something very simple comparatively. I mean, I, I can't, we can't protect what they've already done to their lots. They've already created the situation, so we're going to have our little piece of heaven on our lot. We can make it worse or not. <laughs> you know, that's kind of what's I think we, on us. as the board, have already been admonished about getting into the yeah. question of how big somebody's house is. That's not really our province here tonight. Well, we have to look at it if it's going to be a bad for the public interest that's that's something we have to look at if it's going to be bad for the neighborhood what we have to look at peter is can he build on the private road it's frontage period end of story is what his application is about well no and that's what i think a mistake we've been making is just because there's a pre-existing lot in these, these communities doesn't mean it's an appropriate building lot it means it's something that they did back in the 50s you, 60s we, 70s we vote on the five criteria one of them is yes. the spirit of the ordinance one of them is public welfare mm -hmm. exactly if you don't think it's going to meet those then you vote no on those Yes. And those who think it does vote yes on those, and that's how we deal with it. Yes, and that's where some of my confusion was on some of these past ones. Is, uh, and if you remember from what Bonnie read initially, it's that he it meets all zoning criteria except the frontage. Mm -hmm. Meets all zoning criteria except the frontage. And that's on our private road. That that's the building inspector's call. Does he meet the zoning criteria? We issue permits. We just deal with whatever the applicant requests from mm -hmm. us. But as in this case is road frontage. But the number one issue is public welfare. We can't ignore that. That's not the number one issue. It's one of the five criteria, mm -hmm. which I hope they're in my packet here, Joanna. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> it, do any other board members have questions of Mr. Evans? And then you still have the I, I, okay so you may step back and I'm going to call any one who wishes to speak in support of this application anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the application Gary Bonovan from six Tuckaway Shores and butter not necessarily in opposition of frontage or the issues or what um, Chris has, has uh, 
um, presented here. But if I have to pick one, I guess this is the one because I do have concerns. And maybe this isn't the right forum, and you can. No, nope, you, you may bring anything to our attention, uh, sir, that you think is relevant. So the drainage is a concern. I would like to set the record straight. However, Mr. Evans kind of, you know, made it sound like we did nothing to protect the, the land. We, we um, are you the gutters. person with the large house? Yeah, with full gutters and dry wells to collect all that water. Um, we had to invest an additional twenty thousand dollars this year to uh, address drainage issues of our the septic system. The water runs down that driveway, not septic water. That's not my concern, just general runoff. Turns the corner and was laying right on top of a brand new leach field. So the septic service came out and they said, that leach field is gonna be no good within two years if you don't do something about it. So we had to have uh, an engineer come and the engineer did the plan. The area that Mr. Evans is referring to where they said, you know, if we can kind of direct it a little to go this way and down into the wetland area, and that's what we attempted to do. They put in a, a piece of curving, some granite curving, and that part has worked okay. You know, it, it is not laying on the leach field any longer, but to Mr. White's, you know, concern as well is if you put two more houses up there, just how much more surface water is there and where does it go? It can certainly be addressed, and I think, you know, with proper either storm drains and or dry wells and gutters, you know, if, you know, if that's something that's appropriate, I think that, that that can work fine. So um, may I ask you how old your septic system is? Is it new? Two years. Two years, okay. When we put the addition on, we agreed to do a new septic system with it, even though there was nothing wrong with the old one other than it was built in 1960-something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we just, in order to upgrade the, you know, the safety of, of that system. Up, we elected to put that in, mm -hmm. and that was part of one of the stipulations as well. Did, did you James. have to come before this board? Yes. Okay. Anyone have any questions? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak to this application? Would you like to rebut anything, Mr. Evans? Um, yeah, I just like, again, we just like the same rights as others um, in the area, and, um, and this would be the uh, minimum criteria <coughs> to, um, to be able to use these lots in some sort of way. If you wish, and if you do, maybe add on something about drainage, storm drains. <coughs> Did you close the public hearing? No. I will close the public hearing. You will? Yes, we, we should close it before we move. Yes. Does the board wish to deliberate among us? We have an application before us for two variances, well, one on each lot, having to do with road frontage or the lack of road frontage on a public road. Private. Private road, thank you. Lack of road frontage on a public road. Oh, he has road frontage on a private road. And the applicant has spoken to the five criteria. We've heard from one person in the neighborhood who has a bit of a concern about drainage. Has everybody else had a chance to do a drive-by? I think that's something we should make it part of our regular procedures just so we can see what we're ruling on. <clears throat> it's hard to envision us looking at these piece of paper. I, I hear you, but I have had um, not the opportunity to do that for this case but I do I do agree with you that we it is a priority I just have not had the opportunity with this. I'm, I'm familiar with here I mean I've worked over that area so I'm familiar with this area so. and do you think that septic systems can be adequately designed and yeah, I, think, adequately? Yeah. I mean it's got to meet state criteria so mm -hmm. you, most of the other lots are of similar size in the area so um, they you know, 
And, and DES is part of this anyway, right? What's that? The, the DES, Devi Devi yes. Department of Environmental Services, would be involved because it's. I think oh, yeah, no, maybe the ESA. Uh, right. Did you already submit it or did you? Uh, did not. Okay. Yes. Are you yeah. under. Is that shoreline protection, or do you need shoreline protection on either one of those, or you're back for the part of that? That that was another reason why they did actually, um, you know, stay up on the top side, uh, away from the uh, lake and the shoreline protection. Okay. With the septic sewing, with the yes, septic design. Everything. everything. Right. So your your disturbance of the lots will be further back then from from the side that's near the lake. Yes. And you will you be out of the shoreline protection zone? Yes. <coughs> Madam Chair, could you close? hearing yes I'll close it again no, I didn't hear you say that it was you said you were going to I didn't hear you do that actually. I know but we can still ask him questions yeah I've closed it to the, the public hearing to the public okay. so does any anyone wish to make any further comments suggestions well I do have meetings. a question um, and I guess it would be for you or maybe you can answer fine um, I know that in planning for the before the planning board we can require gutters dry wells etc cetera, etc cetera. we can do that we can do that here yes. as well we've done it many times okay so it is conditions of approval yes okay subject to you make the motion subject to okay What is the correct wording for, oh, so just best, pra best practices regarding, well, yes. then that would be happening Storm anyway. drains, gutters, use of impervious materials for driveways and so forth. Madam Chairwoman, I move that we approve case 19-010-VA-VA um, application from Christopher Evans to permit building on two lots of record, map 70, lot 31, map 70, lot 31 on Tuckaway Shores, subject to consideration of dry wells, gutters and best practices for storm drainage for driveways and the remainder of the lot that is affected through the construction. Can I just ask you to make one small amendment? You said lot 30 twice. Or lot 31. 31 twice. Twice. I'm you sorry, lot 30. 30, 30 Change one of the 31s to 30, Joanna. Maybe reread the motion so the board can hear it. And then we're gonna vote on the five criteria as they are applied to the motion and the application. It's in the second and it's done. Is there a second? Oh, I'll second it. That is correct. Run through them both at the same time. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Will you read the motion for a minute, please? Read the motion? Yeah, so the board can hear it since we discussed. I summarized it. Um, That's okay. I can, you want me to read it over, what I said over again? Sure, that sounds good. All right, to make sure you captured it correctly. Approve case 19-010-VA-VA application from Christopher Evans to approve the variance request, should I say from Article 2, Section C1A of the Nottingham Zoning Ordinance to permit construction of a single family dwelling on Map 70, Lot 30, and Map 70, Lot 31, subject to dry wells gutters and best practices for storm drainage for driveways and area of lot disturbed during construction. It's you're still good with seconding that. Yeah, I did the second. But. Okay. So we've heard it again. And I'm going to go through the five criteria. So I would like you to vote on the five criteria. <coughs> Granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. All those who agree with that statement, raise your right hand. All those opposed? The spirit of the ordinance would be observed. All those who agree with that? Those opposed? Um, substantial justice would be done. Those who agree with that, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area, denial of the variance would result in an un... Oh, thank you. I was wondering where the fifth one was. <laughs> <laughs> the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished. Those who agree with that, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Unnecessary hardship owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship. Those who agree with that statement, raise your right hand. Those opposed? And B, the proposed use is a reasonable one. Those who agree, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Okay. We have three, three to all of them. Your application has been approved, Mr. Evans, and you will receive written notification from Joanna. Um, you should just be aware that anybody has 30 days to appeal our decision. So <coughs> you might want to wait to start construction until those 30 days are up. Otherwise, the risk is yours. hearing this evening before this board is an application it's case number 19-011-VA application from Thomas and, Pati and Patricia Maddy for a variance request for article 3 capital B number 2 of the Zoningham, Nottingham Zoning Board to permit an accessory dwelling unit in an existing home within 50 feet of poorly drained soils. The property is located at 8 Michaela Way in Nottingham, New Hampshire, and is identified as tax map 49 lots 19 sublot 18. Okay, so then it says map error on public hearing notice and building inspector denial letter. Map 42 is the correct map. So the notice had the wrong Wrong map. Hmm. However, all abutters notices were supposed to be Okay, okay. So all the abutters were indeed notified. Okay. Thank you. So, the applicants, please state your name and address so that Joanna can have it for the record. Um, I'm Patricia Maddie of 8 Michaela Way. Um, my husband's not here, but Joanna said. Because he signed. That's correct. 
at Gary Anderson. Gary Anderson Home Improvement LLC. So I'd be uh, provided the application with you, um, the builder for the uh, ADU. And I mentioned we, also, we have more drawings here. Excuse me, you have more drawings, did you say? It's the same copy that you have up there, but if you'd like a ton of copies. Um, actually, it might not hurt just to have one more so that we can see them without passing it around. If you're going to be referring to it, it might be helpful to the, for the board. Watch out, Gary. Thank you, Gary. So this is this drawing is of the lot, yes. Survey of the lot with the, showing the existing building and with the proposed addition and the location of the wetlands with poorly drained soils. Yeah, so I'll, I'll uh, just give you an explanation on that. The um, being that these are. Um, open space developments, the lot setbacks are a little different than most of the town. Um, so the requirement, I believe, is uh, 35 feet from the front setback. That, that's what Dale Sylvia has put on the denial letter. So yeah, 35 feet is the setback. Right, so that is met on the front. Um, mm -hmm. the, the really, the setback in question is to the what's marked as a poorly drained wetland. Um, <clears throat> the, the request is really for the for a, an ADU, which would be 24 by 30 feet, um, attached to the side of the existing um, dwelling. And in doing so, would bring us to that, mark, that marked uh, poorly drained wetland at 37.88. Um, this is um, surveyed and marked uh, by Blaisdell survey. Uh, earlier today, I actually did um, <coughs> contact this for my client, uh, contract the survey, and the surveyor told me earlier today that this wetland, um, granted it is marked on all, all of the uh, town records. However, he did testing of soils, plants, etc. And really the only, his description to me was the reason it is a wetlands is because it's a, um, it's just a kind of a lower spot that water just tends to accumulate. Most of the year it's dry, however, so mm -hmm. he didn't see a, a, a problem at how this would ever affect Okay, so I have a question. I mean, it shows on this map that you gave us this, that it's 37.88 feet from the wetland. And it's and he's saying that it only has to be 35, so. Um, no, that's sorry, not uh, frontage. Yeah. Okay. It's 50 feet. Yeah. To the wetlands. <clears throat> and that's a relief. Uh, oh, so the other, the other setbacks are met. This one has to be 50. Just right here. Thank you. If I may ask, um, I, I went by there this afternoon and I, do you ever see any drainage going down towards that wetland from your house? It looked like it was pretty flat. No. So there's nothing draining down towards that wetland? No, the only time I ever see it, have seen it a little bit damp is like after the snow and it's melting. But I, I never actually walked all the way. I mean, just looking from, from the woods a little bit. So I don't know how deep it is, or I never walked the lot at all. But I don't think that I don't believe that anything drains down to that. Mm. Can I ask why you want to add an ADU? Oh yeah, absolutely. <coughs> um, so my mom, um, my father just passed away, yeah. and my mom's living by herself, and she had a stroke a couple of years ago. And it's 
Um, it's been good, but it would be great for us to have her right there. She lives in Wakefield, and we have to go out there all the time. My sister's in Milton, constantly at her house. This weekend, I spent the night there. Um, so just to have her closer would help our family a lot, help her, knowing that she's safe, and if something happens, she can we're literally right next door. So that's the reason that we are applying for this. Just to make all of our lives easier, know that she's safe and sound. Hmm. But also, it will be really helpful because we were constantly driving up to Wakefield. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, with winter coming too, and I know that this couldn't be done before winter, but we're just nervous about having her, um, she, she has her own house, so you know, she has to deal with plowing and sanding and all that, so it's going to be, you know, we just want to get that part over with as soon as we can possible. We looked into her possibly buying a place too. She had flip-flopped back and forth, um, but she wants to live I'd rather have her live right next to us, um, and she's she's on board with that. For sometimes she was going back and forth, but it's just a better all around situation for the whole family. Now this is strictly for putting up an AD building, not yes. in moving septic or adding septic or no. well or any of that. No. It's just the structure, correct? Yeah, it's okay. just the structure, and we already have a, a septic system that meets the. Okay, that's what I was wondering. The, uh, the current septic design is, is for four bedroom septic, and the home is currently only three bedrooms, so the yep. other bedroom would be in the ADU. Okay, that's so what I was wondering. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. do you want me to go through my. Please. Yes, we, we, we ask that you make your presentation so that. And so, we, um, we act on the information that's brought to us. Okay. So I already explained you know, why we'd like to do this and how we would help our family and make life easier and safer, I think, for my mom. Um, and that we were requesting to get closer to the 50 feet setback to the poorly drained wetland area. Um, for number one, the supporting information, um, the variance would not be contrary, contrary to the public interest because um, the, the ADU will blend with the current house and will take care of the house, keeping the character of the neighborhood. Um, also, the ADU will not threaten the health, safety, or welfare of the public. Um, number two, the spirit of the ordinance is observed. The ADU will still respect a reasonable distance from the poorly drained area and still respect the septic system distances and not impact. I, I don't believe that would impact that area. Uh, substantial justice is done to allow this minor encroachment to the poorly drained area enables the ADU to be built without impa impacting the septic system area and the existing structure of the dwelling. The values of the surrounding property are not diminished. To the contrary, the ADU will add value to the individual property, thereby adding value to surrounding property in the neighborhood. Um, it seems to me that in that neighborhood, the more square footage, the higher the property value. Number five, um, literal enforcement of provisions of the ordinance would result in unnecessary hardship. Um, a no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. Um, and the poorly drained area is the unnecessary hardship. Because if that area did not exist, I would be able to be approved for the building permit. Um, the proposed use is a reasonable one. I'm only requesting a small amount of encroachment and still leaving the poorly drained area untouched and un unaltered, which I think is probably the most important thing. You know, I, it just seems it's, I don't know exactly how many feet that is, but, you know, we're not getting that close to that area. And as you had asked, does it seem to drain into there? I don't believe so. I think it, I think what happens is when the snow melts there, it just goes to that area because it goes down a little bit. So, I haven't noticed any different. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last one. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Do any of the board members have questions? You, you actually you stated that there will be no um, work done within that area at all. That area is not going to be disturbed. 
at the wetland and where it comes. The poorly, poorly drained soil area. Yes, so correctly, correct. In that little box on the map where it's squared off, correct, it would only be where the proposed addition is. Okay. Um, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. You wouldn't have to go any further than that other than maybe take a tree out right next to there if it's like right next to the house or something, but I don't believe. No major tree removal. The, uh, in order to dig, dig for a foundation, yeah, you do need approximately three, four feet on either side of the trench. So we'll go that, the digging will go to that point, but it'll all be replaced and uh, put back probably better than it is now. So, yeah. But three or four feet still does not get you within the poorly drained soils. Keeps you, keeps you outside of that poorly drained soils, correct? <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Yes. And with there being, it's not, it's poorly drained, not very poorly drained, so we don't have to worry about having a wetland scientist go in, correct? That's correct. In fact, the person that surveyed it, uh, Blaisdell survey, is also a wetland scientist, and he went out before the survey, so he made two trips. The first one to, to check to see what was really there. Okay. Because yeah, you meant. It's not obvious. Okay, and you you mentioned that he said it's dry most of the time, but when he did go out, if was it wet at all, so that he looked for all the little creatures, whatever else they need to. He, he said there were no critters. Perfect. Okay, I'm happy with that. Thank you. That was his terminology. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thank probably you. just seasonally wet now and then. That's that's what what I, mean. I mean, all these years. Cool. Cool. All these years, this development's been there quite a few years, and this has not grown into a wetlands. Right. It was probably put down as a wetland just for, you know, because it appeared to be wetlands. He they described it as a slight depression. Right. So lowest point collects. Possibly, if there is any moisture, it'll go there. It was probably a rut that didn't get filled in, and that's now it's poorly drained soil. All right, thank you. Thank you. I don't see anyone here to speak for or against. So, does anyone on the board have additional questions? Need any more information? Okay. Motion. The motion would be in order then. Can we should we close the public hearing? Yes. Okay. And I'll close the public hearing. Okay. Madam Chairwoman, I move that we approve the application for case 19 dash. 011-VA from Thomas and Patricia Maddy to accept their request for an ADU, um, giving them relief from Article 3B2 of the Nottingham Zoning Ordinance on 8 Michaela Way. I'll second that motion. Okay, now moving to the five criteria for the granting of a variance. All those who believe this uh, granting this variance would not be contrary to the public interest, please raise your right hand. No one's opposed. Uh, the spirit, the spirit of the ordinance would be observed. All those who agree with that, raise your right hand. Substantial justice would be done. Raise your right hand. And the values of the surrounding properties would not be diminished. And owing to the special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area, denial of the variance would result in unnecessary hardship because no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance provision and the specific application of that provision to the property. All those who agree with that, raise your right hand. Those opposed? The question has been approved. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Again, um, the 30-day rule applies to you. Anyone in the world can can um, um, challenge the seal, this decision. So if you get Gary out there with his bulldozer hmm. and somebody appeals it, you could lose a little money. I mean, that's up to you to decide. You certainly may start tonight if you wish, um, but most people play that. Because there's thirty, there's a thirty-day appeal period. Okay. Well, wait, what do you mean losing money? Like 
Well, let, let, let's. Do we start the job and then we have to stop now, or we get? No, no, you probably. But if they won their appeal, then you would have to stop. If they overturned our decision, then you would have to stop. And they have 30 days to file. Um, would they, do they have to file with 45 days now? 45. New laws. Thank you. 45 days. I told the, the last guy the wrong thing. Yeah, well, we did. 45 days they have to appeal. So um, can they go directly to the court? They don't have to ask for a rehearing. No, a rehearing has to be requested first. Yes. Okay, so they have to ask us for a rehearing. We have to agree to it. Mm -hmm. um, if we do, then they have to go through the rehearing. And we may or may not change our decision. Um, or if we refuse to rehear it because we don't think the rehearing it would do anything, they can then file with the court. It doesn't happen too often, but it does happen once in a while. Okay. There's just something you need to consider as a yeah. the person with the checkbook. I mean, I wonder if I should come to all the houses and say, why did you come to do <coughs> or maybe that's going too far, I don't know. Well, you, you don't exactly have a room full of people protesting, so. You're pretty safe, I think. So, even if, even if people don't show up, sometimes they'll send a letter to the board if they can show up in person. Um, but they don't have to show up. You know, this is televised, and they can watch the hearing. Oh, okay. The, 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 the decision will be posted on the town website. Yeah. And so, if anybody has a bee in their bonnet about it, you know, you could it could be challenged. Okay. It doesn't happen very often, but it can. Yeah. That's all. Just want you to be aware. Good luck. Best wishes. You're welcome. Thank you. It goes well. Enjoy time with your mom. Yes. It's precious. Absolutely, I know that all too well. Hi, Gary. So, Joanna, do we have any staff board members' updates? Um, cases for the next meeting? I don't have any. even as town citizens, not just the board members, to communicate with the planning board if you have suggestions, changes, whatever. Um, so I'll send those out as soon as I can. Um, I do have rumblings of more applications coming, so please keep an eye on your When's the deadline for applications for November? It is October 28th. Okay, so for a couple of weeks almost. And so when is the deadline? It's probably on a chart in here. For the um, planning board to submit the zoning changes. They must have to have a public hearing about it. Yes, we do. Have to have a public hearing. I think your you have a, the important meeting date chart and have the there. Are Right here. So it's right after this thing. Right after, right after tonight's information. Yep. Okay, right there. First grad. January 20th, is that right? <coughs> Last day to hold first public hearing on adoption or amendment of zoning ordinance, January 20th. And, and at the last week's meeting, we did review um, quite a few of the changes, the, the ones that were um, most critical, I haven't found the and, the, and some of the other cleanup issues that are. Is something going to be happening with the 200 feet of that? 
Yes, we are just redefining, I believe, what, what frontage. That? Is that not correct? Right. I think so. Um, at per what the RSA actually defines frontage yes. as, correct. which would keep a lot out of here. <laughs> yes, because we get a lot of those. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying. And we, it's, but we well, discussed I must have it a lot it. at that meeting. I must have said it a million times. We've got to fix this. <laughs> That to redefine this so um, yes that frontage is being redefined we hope that'll be up to the public makes sense so yeah absolutely. yeah it's, it's a preponderance of our case it's like mm. say. yes because we have a lot of old lots on private roads well and that's what Joanna presented to the board to the planning board uh, the percentage of cases that we have seen within the last especially the last two years I don't remember what the percentage yeah. is. Most, most of your cases. More, more than 50%, probably. Yeah, yeah. I want to say it was closer to 90. Yeah, yeah. Cases. Not surprised. Yeah. Okay, so then the last thing on the agenda is the minutes. Well, Peter went to the ZBA thing. Should he not? At least Maybe after the minutes. Okay. Madam, Other business. Madam Chair, I, well, that was under staff member update, but okay. Um, I move that we approve the minutes of August 20th, 2019 as um, amended because I did send some changes out. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor of approving the minutes of August 20th, please raise your right hand. Those opposed? And it's been approved. Okay, staff members update. We're going back to that now. Yes, I did attend a ZBA training and they yelled at me for abstaining. They said, you're not, shouldn't be abstaining from, you know, because I discussed that whole, the feelings yeah, I, that went into the process. I would like process. you to tell, to tell the board what their rationale was. Well, their because feeling. Because I asked the same question. I asked for uh, legal counsel on that. Well, their feeling, first of all, is that we are like a judge and jury. We have to make a ruling. And, you know, abstaining isn't a ruling, so you have to make a ruling. And if you feel strong one way or the other. So that was one of the things. The second thing, which I alluded to, is they talked about the importance of documentation and how all our documents have to be accurate. Anything can be challenged and everything they submit has to be accurate or we can reject the application. So that's... Well, I was reacting to that initially. No, I understand that. I, I think this is a particular case, though. Well, we wouldn't normally see. It's not that something was wrong. It's that the circumstances changed, and he had an equitable interest in the property from the get-go. When you have something under agreement, you have certain rights that are very yeah. different. And he also was their agent, so yeah. but, to um, me, it's like it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really a change. So, uh, if the property so we hands. know that it's happened once. It could happen again. Is there another way the board would prefer I notify and the application be um, noted differently as well, that the property is under agreement with said um, applicant? Is that, would that have helped? No. I, I would ask for a legal opinion on that. Okay. That's what I would do. Okay. Um, because it, just as a person, I'm, I, I have no legal training whatsoever but to me things that that happen in civil court reason is reasonableness is a big issue mm -hmm. to me this is a very reasonable change that doesn't really change anything and I think the court would say it was fine why well, I, I, I mean the court a lot of times is they say you don't have standing so but he had, I mean, he had standing. He, yeah, had, standing, right. he right. had standing. So I don't. In think. all case, in all, that's what they it, with both all. hats on, as their agent or as the owner, he had right. standing. And he had a purchase and sale. And as the buyer, right. he had three hats on. Right. And I wasn't sure what the rush was, though. I mean, he obviously wanted to get this uh, right through. Winter. And, um, Winter's coming. Well, let's see. Because again. a lot can still be done in, from now till the end of December. Actually, sometimes even into Jan the end of January foundation can be put in and you can get a lot done between now and then if you get the approvals and additionally <laughs> except for you the rest of the board did not have a problem with it so to me it wasn't a rush it was like the guy's gone through the process he's paid a lot of money to come here because it's not free to come here um, and but unless we have a real reason uh, if we need legal advice believe me I'm, I'm in for 
Now, the, the other question I had, which had to do with this case, but a couple others, is just the, um, the hardship question, number five, is that the guy paid 425000 for a house on Patuckaway Lake in two back lots. So he'd gotten his value. It's not like he had to develop those two. It was a hardship on him. That's not really so your I didn't business. really that is, see what the hardship was. That is not your was. business. But what's the hardship? Well, he, he owns two other he lots that he wants problems. to build on. And that's, they're, that lots, the they're, they're, they're lots that were created as building lots. Uh, they weren't created for year-round houses, all that, and that's one of the questions I think we need to ask the lawyers. A lot of these these um, lots around Patuckaway Lake were not meant to be building lots; they were meant to be camp lots. Well, how many camps versus buildings are there? Well, right now um, there are very few camps. As far as the older buildings, I'll say it's half and half: half camps and half older houses. As far as us giving approvals for people to put a new house on a six thousand square foot or ten thousand square foot lot on a lake, is like. I mean, they have to practically clear cut, which they're going to do with these two lots this guy's going to build. He's going to have to clear cut that. It has that. nothing to do with the application before us. Oh, it's going to it affect not the our public interest, though. Anything that affects the public interest, we have to consider. The public's safety, health, safety, welfare. Yes. The, and the property values. The, 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 issue, the issue you're forgetting, Peter, though, is that the lots and what he's requesting meet all zoning criteria except for frontage on a class five or road no better. it doesn't meet any of our so, building well, criteria it doesn't have a 30,000 square foot time out. wait a minute let me finish my talking to you here okay. if we if we are able to change the definition for frontage we won't even have been seeing this case so you would have nothing at all to say about him putting the house on his lot because he would meet all criteria well, I would hope the planning board would, would look at a property like this because this slope is like this on this property. You wouldn't need to go to the planning board. All, there's he drainage problems to, already. You huh? would not need to go to right. the planning it's board. It's already an approved lot. So. It's, an, it's, it's a lot record. What a mess. This town's <laughs> turning into a mess. And people keep saying, you will prove everything. You let anybody do anything How in this town. How big is your lot? Huh? How big is your lot? Well, the one that with the single family home is 15 acres. Um, the one with the four cottages, which include ours, is about two, but... There are four residences on it. Well, one's only one year-round residence. And that's the one farthest from the lake, and it has a four-bedroom septic and a well, and, you know, with the, you know, you know, the well radius and everything else. But these things, the thing we approved last month was horrendous, you know, to be perfectly blunt. And they're going to, you know, the well radius is going on these abutters. The abutters didn't like it. He's going to have to clear cut to fit a house and septic. And, and it's definitely going to impact the, that neighborhood and those property values. The ordinance says nothing about clear cutting. Well, no, I'm saying if you, if you take, do a yeah, drive-by and, and you imagine the houses where they want to put them, you would be horrified some of these things we've been approving. And we're going to see it. We're going to go down these neighborhoods. We're it's going to be all clear cut. We're approving one thing, the road frontage. The rest of it, we're not approving. Well, when we make that approval, we're approving The approval, else. the five criteria are to be applied only to the road frontage question. Well, we approve that 200, that variance to the 200 foot road frontage. We're saying, yes, this is in the public interest. Yes, it's not going to hurt the other property values. Yes, you know, so we're saying yes to those questions if we approve that, that one variance. That's why I'm saying if I think this is not in the public interest, I'm going to vote no. If I think it's going to hurt the neighborhood and hurt the surrounding property values, I'm going to vote no. That's my conscience. That's my job on this board. If we approve everything, why even have this board? Why do we even exist if we're going to approve everything that's put before us with no scrutiny? I mean, like I said, that, that is I, really, I, when you of, say things like that, I, it really... I'm sorry, but some of the things no, we've approved this year no have been wrong. Well, that's your opinion. That's my opinion, yes. Right, and I disagree with you most of the time. Yeah, I know. Anyway. Everybody does. Madam Chair, <laughs> the reason we have a zoning board is, is to give people relief from it. But if we approve everything... And they're not hurting anybody. Then, I mean, once again, we're this town's going to go to hell. We're required to approve it if they meet the five criteria. There's going to be un un uncontrolled building everywhere. Nobody's going to have any privacy. There's going to be people looking out their windows at That's their That's not buildings. our job. You should, you should get on the plane. Well, in my board. opinion, it is. Protect the public interest. That's our sworn duty. These, these people could protect their own interest by buying those lots and don't build on them. But how can you afford a $200,000 well, lot? That's, that's, 
Well, how are you going to break this guy? Buy a law and then say, oh, no, you can't do anything with it. So one with the money when. That's the way it works in this country anyway. So one, the more money you got, the more rights you got. Is that the way you want it? Or are we all equals in this democracy? <laughs> I'm an equal, but I don't have much money. So I'm, you know, in the law, eyes, of, eyes of the law, I'm not much compared to a millionaire who can go in and buy these lots. And if, they, if we say no, they can threaten to sue us. And then the town council is telling us, and, oh, you better approve it. We don't, we don't want to spend attorney's fees on defending the town's positions, which is what we're feeling. They don't want to spend any attorney's fees. That's your opinion? You, you, you make every statement like the whole board agrees with you, and clearly it doesn't. No, I know. So. But that's, you know, I'm not a, you know, a head nod or somebody, you know, I have to speak my mind. I can't just go along to get along. I never could. But you, you're, never mind. Madam Chair. Yes, Teresa. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion to adjourn. I wish you would. Thank you. I move we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor of adjourning, raise your right hand. I was opposed. Thank you, ma'am. And I apologize for anybody I've attended oh, once yeah. again. <laughs> I can't help that. We're pretty thick skin. Well, good thing. And I'm pretty abrasive. Well, it's not that you're abrasive. You're you're inactive.